Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now hot on the heels of my AP201 video that I did last week, the motherboard has just arrived for the build that we're gonna be doing. So this is a tough series build, MATX. We've covered a lot of ATX and also some ITX boards on the channel, but the MATX is generally very popular. Obviously a lot of people like smaller systems, so it does make sense. So it is nice to be able to cover another MATX board on the channel. This one is the Tough Gaming B760M plus Wi-Fi D4. Now there's also a DDR5 version of this available, so it's just without the D5 on the end. And you can also get that with and without Wi-Fi. It's currently 219 pounds on scan, so relatively affordable for a 13th series board. Also, there is gonna be the back to front version available coming soon as well, so for that stealthy cable management. And if you want something even cheaper still, but still supports B760, then look at the B760M-E, which seems to be a, a relatively new version that's even more stripped back, so it should save you even more money. So inside the box, we have got our Wi-Fi antennas. This is Wi-Fi 6 supported, also has Bluetooth built in as well. And underneath we'll find our board, which we'll take out just temporarily to look at any extra accessories. So under this, we have got certificate of reliability. This is generally a thing you get with all the Asus Tough products, just to show you that it has been tested for different methods. There's some uh, safety information, also some stickers as well, if you fancy putting any of those on your case. Um, we've got two M.2 standoffs, some screws, single-sided M.2 pad, and then two SATA cables, one of which is right angled. That's it in terms of accessories, not uh, too much for this one. So there we have the B760M Plus Wi-Fi D4. We do our usual run through. First of all, we just want to look at those chokes and things. As we have generally seen on the tough boards, very nice and beefy over the VRM cooling. Uh, of course, we've got our LG 1700 socket, so it's bought for 12th and 13th gen. I think I'm going to use the 13700K when I build with this. And I know it's a B-series board, so that will mean it lacks overclocking support. But with that VRM, I think it's more than capable of handling it. So I think now we'll do our usual go around the board. So on the top left hand side, we have got an eight pin EPS and also an additional four pin. We've got our first four pins as a CPU fan and an AIO pump. There's an additional one to the further right. So that's an optional fan. Below that, we've got two of Asus's addressable Gen 2 headers. So these are five volt addressable. You've also got the postcode LEDs to the right of those as well, which are very handy. Of course, our 24 pin for power. There's a USB 3 header. That's USB 3.2 Gen 1, so that would be 5 gigabits per second. Then we've got USB-C as well, which is USB 3.2 Gen 1, so again, 5 gigabits per second. Two SATA ports on the right angle, and we've got all of our front panel usual things on the right-hand corner. There's two more SATA ports that are going to come straight out of the board. Another four pin for any fans. We've got two USB 2 headers, so great for anything that uses like Corsair Commanders or NZXT hubs. Further 5 volt addressable header, so that's a total of three on this board, and you've got a standard or a 12 volt addressable. Two more four pins, that gives us a total of seven on this board, and then at the very end, we've got our front panel audio. Just going up back by the socket, so our dim slots will support up to 5,333 mega transfers per second of DDR4, up to 128 gigabytes. If you buy the DDR5 board, you can support up to 7,200, that's with XMP, obviously, you can push it further if you want to go manual overclocks as well. So now down to our expansion slot. So the first one for our M.2, a little bit of aluminium for a heat sink and then a thermal pad on the back. So our first storage slot, this is an 80 mil Gen 4 slot. There isn't any Gen 5 storage support on this board, but below that we do have a Gen 5 PCIe lane. So you can support those graphics cards when they're available. Additionally, further down, we have got a second cover. Again, thermal pad on the back, which will support another 80 mil Gen 4 storage drive. So you've got a total of two M.2 slots on this board. There's another PCIe lane, which will operate a Gen 4 below that. We've also got an X1 slot as well. So anything you might want to use like a capture card, for example. So with those covers back on, we can go to look at the rear IO. We've got a display port and HDMI, so great for any processors with inbuilt graphics. Always good for troubleshooting. There's two USB 2s. The four green USB ports is USB 3.2 Gen 2, so 10 gigabits per second. The blue one is USB 3.2 Gen 1, so five gigabits. We've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by two header, so 20 gigabits per second. Our 2.5 gig LAN, which is by Realtek, Wi-Fi 6E antennas, and then some 7.1 audio options at the bottom. So a nice little compact board, plenty of features for the price and nice lot of connectivity options and rear IO and things like that as well. You're not gonna be paying for things that you won't use like you might see for some higher end boards. So I think it does fit the bill very well. Looking forward to using it with the AP201. So stay tuned, get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss that. Should be coming up very soon. Just waiting to see if we can get something special to go in this and uh, to really take it to the next level. But that'll be coming up very soon. 
So I hope you're all looking forward to that. But that will do for this video, the B760M Gaming Plus Wi-Fi D4. I'll add the other variants down in the description box below if you want to get the DDR5 one as well, for example. But all the links will be down there. Thank you all for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks to ACES for this out for me to look at. And I'll see you all in the next one.